Young Love takes the helm and Dad flips out. Welcome to the Disney Scrapbook, where together we take a journey to explore Disney history from 50 years ago. My name is Nolan. Today, I thought we would take a look at Disney's 1973 romantic comedy feature film Super Dad, based on a story by the American writer Harlem Ware. In Disney's live action film, Super Dad, successful lawyer Charlie McCready has big plans for his daughter Wendy. In an attempt to fulfill this, he tries to pry Wendy from her childhood friends, whom he believes lack ambition. William Harlan Ware, the author of the story, hailed from a family of writers and frequently had his works published in the Sunday Evening Post. His 1951 novel, Come Fill the Cop, was adapted into a motion picture by Warner Brothers, starring James Cagney and Gig Young. However, he was best known for writing the radio scripts for The Buttons and One Man's Family. Produced during the fall of 1972, the film Super Dad was given a limited release in Los Angeles on December 14th, 1973, so that it could be considered for the Oscars, but was suddenly released on January 18th, 1974, premiering in New York on February 2nd, 1974. Interestingly, producer Ron Miller, who later became CEO of the Disney Company, had announced that Super Dan was slated for production in 1966. However, Daily Variety reports that filming was scheduled to commence on. October 9th, 1972, with first production charge appearing on November 3rd, 1972, under the working title of a son-in-law for Charlie McCready. Artistic camera work directed by Andrew Jackson opens the film to the sound of the theme song, These Are the Best Times, a dreamy love song that plays over the opening credits and is subsequently unsuccessfully, in my opinion, for pleased in the final scene, where it's sung by a procession of choir boys. This 1970s folk ballad, along with two other songs, Los Angeles and When I'm Near You, were composed by Disney Studios' publicity department employee, Shane Tatum, who had previously written the theme song, More Over Me, for Disney's world drama, The Biscuit Eater, and living one day at a time for Charlie and the Angel. Both films that I previously reviewed and I will leave a link to in the description below. Tatum will go on to write several more theme songs for Disney films of the 1970s. These Are the Best Times was sung by pop and country singer-songwriter Bobby Goldsboro who had a number one hit in 1968 with Honey, and between 1973 and 76, hosted the variety television show, The Bobby Goldsboro Show. Goldsboro would have been popular with the teenage audiences of this era. This is probably why Disney chose him to sing the theme song to this film about teenage rebellion. Interestingly, the song was only released in its promotional form as a Disneyland Records 7-inch disc, V561, and has never been released in stereo. Some promotional short films were distributed of the song that played clips from the movie. An episode of the Bobby Goldsboro Show featured the song and movie clips. Bob Crane, probably best known as Colonel Hogan in the television series Hogan's Heroes, was cast as the well-meaning but interfering father, Charlie McCready. I feel that his performance as the establishment father and lawyer comes across as angry rather than funny, creating a cold relationship with his daughter. Even though, in a January 1974 radio interview with Dick Strout, he relays that he has personal experience with teenage daughters. I do not feel that this came across in his performance. Bob Crane started out as a radio announcer and disc jockey, 
before branching out into TV and subsequently movies. The character of Charlie McCready was his first starring role in a film, and the opportunity came when he was at a low point in his career. He would be mysteriously murdered by an electrical cable and a tripod on June 29th, 1978. If this intrigues you, was the 2002 biographical drama film Autofocus, or read the book The Murder of Bob Crane by Robert Gray Smith. If Disney executives had known about Crane's sordid personal life, they would never have cast him in this role. This could explain why Superdad sat on the studio shelves for a year before being released, but does not explain why he was cast in Disney's 1976 comedy film, Gus. This was the first and only Disney assignment for Barbara Rush, who portrayed Charlie McCready's ever-patient wife Sue, mother of teenage Wendy, having won the Golden Globe Award in 1954. As most promising newcomer for a role in the science fiction film, it came from out of space. She became known for playing wealthful women of means, as her character quietly does in Superdad or polished high society matriarchs. But the breakthrough role never came. In Superdad, her on-screen chemistry with her daughter is appropriate. But towards her husband, she seems cold. Maybe there was tension on set, as Crane had several reprimands about his behavior during filming. Starring in his ninth leading role for Disney, Kurt Russell plays Bart. Wendy McCready's childhood sweetheart. At the age of 21, he played himself, and therefore creates a believable character. At this juncture in his career, he was recovering from a baseball injury that would finally end that chapter in his career. And at this young age, he had a sight set on being a film producer, and while acting, would try and learn about production, camera angles, and set design. Although this dream would not come to fruition, I'm sure this study was the reason why he became such a successful actor. Initially ventriloquist, then a radio disc jockey, Joe Flynn was a serious actor before being pigeonholed in the comedic roles. He was known for playing Captain Wallace Binghampton on the 1960s TV sitcom McHale's Navy before his face became so familiar to Disney audiences, when he would appear in 12 Disney movies and TV films, starting as the announcer on a TV commercial in the 1963 film Son of Flubber. In Superdad as Charlie's client, shipping magnet, Sirius Hirschberger, Joe Flynn played the usual Disney character of the bungling, blustering wolf. Here, he does a great job with the character, with what he is given to work with. But as the focus of the subplot, the script does not give him enough time to develop the character, and at times the audience is left hanging with questions about who he is or how he relates to the story. Once again, Kathleen Cody appears as the teenage love interest in her third Disney film where she again plays herself. This time, her performance comes across as a little more sincere. Deadpan comedian Bruno Kirby, with his high voice, rapid line delivery, does an excellent job here as the carefree teenager Stanley Schlimmer. In one of his first ever film appearances, he will go on to have a successful acting career becoming best known as the best friend of Billy Crystal in When Harry Met Sally and City Slickers. It's interesting to note that he's a cast member to mostly work with the St. Bernard, Wally Poli, when he had a history of severe allergies. The hilarious octogenarian, beer-drinking, pool-playing, motorcycle-riding character of Mother Barlow, who runs the co-ed boarding house, is fabulously played by veteran actress Judith Lowry, who first appeared on screen in 1947. She was 82 
when she played Mother Barlow, but ended up capping her career in 1975 as Mother Dexter on the TV sitcom Phyllis. Mother Barlow fulfills the same comedic role as Nancy Walker's character Mrs. Peterson does so perfectly in Disney's The World's Greatest Athlete which the Disney scrapbook has previously reviewed and will leave a link to in the description below. Dick Warlock was once again Kurt Russell's stunt double. In this film, the comedic build-up of stunts seems to miss the mark. Super Dad was the first time that two of the brothers from the prolific McReady family worked together. Joseph McReady wrote the script and Vincent McReady was the director. Super Dad was Vincent's fourth time directing a string of Disney live-action films in the 1970s. Furbing took place in California on the Burbank Studio lot in the hills of San Francisco, San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf, the Bay Houseboat at Walter Point in Socialite, and at Newport Beach in Los Angeles. Super Dad opened the mixed reviews. On January 10th, 1974, The Hollywood Reporter stated, It is a lifeless movie which refers to nothing current in the culture and lacks the imaginative magic which used to be synonymous with the Disney name. On February 11th, 1974, Judith Quist in the New York Times described the film as Shady and stupid by the lowest family fare standards. But Variety on January 16th, 1974 stated that it should strike a respondent note with any generation and commended the performances and technical elements, including Buddy Baker's melodic score. This film had all the makings to be something special, but it just did not hit the mark. Several scenes included real projection screens that were incredibly obvious. Like when the gang are all laughing it up on the water ski boat, the background projection is flat and disconnected to the action. According to Daily Variety on October 13th, 1972, the recent Academy Award winner, Gid Young, who had co-starred in Come For The Cop, another Harlem Rail story, was originally cast as Charlie McCready, but dropped out of artistic differences. I don't know if he would have been any better than Bob Crane, but I certainly think that either Fred McMurray or Dean Jones would have helped to carry this movie. Although, for Fred McMurray, the role would have been incredibly similar to Mr. Biddle in Disney's 1967 musical, The Happiest Millionaire. I feel that when Disney attempts to be too contemporary, they lose what makes them unique. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. If you would like an evening full of laughs but are not too concerned about the quality of the acting, then Super Dad can be found on iTunes, YouTube, Amazon Prime, Google Play, and of course DVD. If you enjoy this type of 50th anniversary content, Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. The Disney Scrapbook will be producing other 50th anniversary content throughout the year. This will include reviews of Disney films, LPs, books, and free book content. Thanks everybody for watching. See you again soon. TTFN, laugh it out.